Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at some issues that some of you guys have had with my videos. We're going to dive into the comments section and see what you have been saying as well, and a few opinions about some of the content I've been putting out lately. I have to say, it didn't mean to upset anyone. But also, later on in this video as well, I'm going to give you a weather forecast for the week ahead. However, you can see as well that I'm over here in the UK. I'm in a very beautiful English country garden. The weather's been really, really lovely and warm today. But just just to remind you as well to consider subscribing to the channel because I'll be traveling back to Mallorca this week from Bristol Airport. We're going to see what it's like actually traveling back in, well, in almost peak season. We've had quite a lot of travel chaos going on over at the airports this past seven days as well. So to find out what my journey is going to be like. Don't forget to hit that not notifications bell too so you don't miss that video too. Also, I've just put out a video all about Mallorca in July and also put out a video about the top 10 things for you to see and do if you're over here on holiday, particularly if you're a first time visitor and I'll pin both of those videos right at the end of this video. So make sure you watch to the end to catch those videos too. Okay, so the first thing I want to say is thank you so much for all the fantastic comments I've received on on the videos lately as well. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to actually write a comment, good and bad as well. I always take any kind of bad feedback on board too. So do comment away. Um, I try and listen to what, what you guys say because essentially it's, it's your channel and um, I try and create content about what you want to see on that channel as well. And if it's something you don't like, just let me know, let me know in comments below. Okay, but anyway, let's check out the first video here. And I'm gonna refer back to a video that I made a couple of Mondays ago talking about a ban on promoting the hidden beaches over in Mallorca. So let's take a look at the first comment. Now, I can see somebody here has said, some people are never satisfied. You either want money from tourism or you don't, but you can't have it both ways. Other than that, nice video. Cheers for that. <laughs> okay, so we also have another comment as well, responding to that saying, um, I totally agree, that irritated me too. I've been visiting those hidden beaches for nearly 50 years. Fine, don't promote hidden beaches if you don't want to, but don't try and make people feel guilty for visiting them or getting a hire car. And also another reply to that comment saying, I agree with everything you said. People should also remember the world is for everyone to explore and belongs to no one. Okay, so actually really interesting comments and I appreciate that point of view too. And the first thing I'm gonna say is it's not my intention to irritate anyone or tell anyone what to do. And I'm sitting here on my high horse saying, don't, don't go here, don't go there, don't hire a hire car. But at the end of the day, um, I'm just kind of trying to tell it like it is and also from my perspective as well as a resident on the island. Um, over the years, over the recent years, we've seen a vast increase in tourism over in Mallorca. And I know a lot of holidaymakers are going over to seek the idyllic empty beaches, which in my opinion, you can't actually find any more during the, during the summer months, during peak season. Um, no matter how far and wide you travel or how far and wide you hike, you're just not going to find those empty beaches anymore because there's Always going to be people on them and you're going to find as well it's not just holiday makers it's locals too that are leaving rubbish all over the beaches and um, these hidden beaches because there are no beach services on these beaches they're not take, clearing up after themselves they're creating a mess it's not just tourists I'm not blaming tourists for that so my feeling for this summer is is that if you are looking for an empty beach well a lot of the bigger beaches do have empty bits to them so you can still find your piece of paradise without having an, uh, an environmental impact on the island but then again if you do want to go out um, looking for the hidden beaches, by all means go and do that and you're absolutely 100% right. Pick up after yourself, don't leave any kind of environmental impact, don't leave plastic wrappers rubbish all over the beach either. But it's really just trying to go with what the sentiment is this year. As, as well as we haven't really seen much in the way of any kind of advice being given out to anybody. Everyone's talking about tourism saturation but no one's really doing anything about it. So I'm doing my best from my point of view to try and address it and at least have some kind of responsibility as well to the content I'm putting out and also promoting tourism in that I want you guys to have the very best holiday that you've paid for coming over to the islands and, and the best experience too so that's why I'm giving out the messages as well and to just prepare you also. Okay so what else have we seen? Well we've seen some comments about my, my car hire comments especially me saying don't bother hiring a car this year because the roads are too busy 
well they are and um but anyway this other person says as well she said it's com it completely annoys me that anyone should try and tell me that i can't hire a car i will be hiring one and traveling when i want to all the places are busy in peak season you accommodate for it okay fair enough another comment to that as well saying we always hire a car and go wherever we like whenever we like as well never had problems that's fantastic never been around my way down the southwest but anyway um and also the same person has commented as well this video seems to be saying come here on holiday but stay in your big resort and if you do venture out don't use a hire car let the locals get on public transport first only travel around in certain times and this doesn't sound like a relaxing holiday to me once again um sorry to sound like i'm preaching to you it sounds really bad doesn't it um but i'm just making you aware of the pain points particularly as a resident on the island that i've experienced um in mallorca as well and this summer it feels like it's got busier feels like it's getting worse and i guess if you're coming over here for a week or for two weeks you're not going to have the same experience that i do on the island um every single day either when i'm trying to get out or trying trying to travel around after say 2 p.m from the southwest in, in the direction of palma in the afternoon as well getting caught in that traffic every single time and trying to trying to plan my journey to avoid all the all the pain points or wondering if i go to soyer if i'm going to get stuck in the traffic coming out of soyer in the afternoon as well um it's the same thing every day and and I guess it needs to be addressed. It needs someone to address it. I'm obviously not that person either. Someone needs to put some measures in place, but I'm just giving you my um, opinions of what it's like traveling around. And also just letting you know that the buses and actually no matter what time you travel this summer, whether you go first thing in the morning, later on in the afternoon, later on in the evening, I think you're gonna find the buses to be very crowded as well. So I've just put that out there too. Um, I'm not saying let locals on first. I'm just saying if you're not in a rush, you, if you are on holiday, if you see someone trying to get on, get to work, may, or you, you see, or they ask you as well, please can I just get on the bus? I'm running late or I need to get to work. Maybe just let them on. I don't know. I'm not telling you what to do. Do what you want. It's your holiday. But I'm just aware, making you aware of some pain points around the island as well and how to navigate those. So um, do I do apologize for being a little bit on the preachy side. Let me know as well, if you're over here on holiday as well, if you're in Mallorca on holiday, if you've hired a car what's your experience been drop those comments below let me know this year if you've been hiring a car what your experience has been of driving around Mallorca whether it's been um, a complete nightmare whether you found parking whether you've been sitting on the Via Centura motorway whether you've had trouble getting to the airport or even leaving the airport just just let me know what your experience has been because of course your experience is gonna be a little bit different from mine um, as a resident so so let us know below I'll, I'll, I'll be really interested to know so comment away on that as well any Anyway, right, let's head on over to the airport now because, well, I've had lots of comments about the uh, Palmer Airport as well on the videos and I've got some pretty good advice for you as well. Don't forget to, I'm going to be coming through the airport this week as well, see what my experience is going to be like. But um, we had some really good advice here from one viewer who said, we travelled home three weeks ago as a family of 11. Wow. And found the overall, overall experience very easy. However, please be aware that if you're travelling with a group with kids, parents and grandparents, those with children do get separated at passport control as it's only over 18s who can use the electronic checks. It's no big deal, but it's something to be aware of. Okay, that is true. So in the UK, if you're traveling back to the UK, um, you, um, 12 year old, I think it's kids over 12, uh, can actually use the electronic gates to go through border control. They can just pop their passport into the electronic gate and they get let through. In Mallorca, you have to be over the age of 18. So um, when they say kids will be separated, obviously a parent has to go with them. They're not gonna be separated from the whole family. So they'll need just one parent to go into the family queue and that means going and, and having your passport checked by um, somebody in border force by a policeman in, in border force and having your passport stamped before being let through and the rest of the family all the other over 18s can go through the electronic checkpoints but not everyone's going to have the same experience especially now we've heard horror stories from over at the airport i do believe it kind of depends what day you come in on as well um but a lot needs to be sorted out over at palmer airport with regards to some days are worse than others and i do have a comment here saying the queue management was farcical and one person stamping passports it took 45 minutes for my wife and our two boys to get through 
And at the electronic gates, there were three guys sitting, uh, twiddling their thumbs. Why two weren't assigned to the family control area to help relieve the queues is beyond me. Um, and also, as well, another comment saying, travelled yesterday, the family passports channel is a joke. They need to increase the number of staff to control the flow of families. Once again, yeah, that's not fantastic. I'm actually going to be com contacting the airport as well with some of these issues that have come up on the videos as well. Let's see if we can't get a response from our, our team over the airport to see if they're going to make any changes as we go on into peak season, particularly with the number of, of families that are travelling as well. Okay, so you may have seen my video from the other day traveling over to the UK. Um, I was in the brand new Terminal A area, which has gone un under significant refurbishment. Go and check out that video. I'll, I'll put a link in the description text below this one. Um, but I did notice as well, there was, there was no drinking water, no free drinking water points. Um, and the bathrooms weren't in a great state. And we have a comment as well from a view viewer saying, we went through Palmer Airport last week for a 2 a.m. flight. It was baking hot. They took water of us obviously going through the, the security area the water machine stole our money and there was no drinking water taps we got dehydrated on top of exhausted and were wiped out for days afterwards that's not great either don't don't be worried by that comment too worried about that comment i'm finding a lot of people are getting through the airport quickly again i'm going to bring this up with with the airport let's see what they say someone else commenting on the state of the airport as well saying we traveled home today we got to terminal a my wife used the ladies near gate 121 as i recommended two toilets were out of use there's no soap or tissue paper two dryers were not working just before we boarded at gate 17 she went into the toilets near it and turned straight around and came out as it was in a bad state Again, it does look like they do have some issues over there with cleaning and just sorting out that whole area. Which leads me on to the weather forecast for the week ahead. Well, it's looking a little bit unusual going into July. Normally at this time of year, it's very, very hot. We normally come over to the UK at this time of year. And, and as, as I head back to Mallorca, I kind of dread those really high temperatures, which are normally in the high 30s by now. They're not this year. We're going to be having highs of 31 degrees during the week. We're going to be having lows of around 20 degrees Celsius too but the average temperature for the week ahead is going to be in the high 20s which is quite unusual and um, I'm going to enjoy it I actually prefer that kind of that kind of heat where it's not too too suffocating it means you can actually go to the the beach during the day as well which in my opinion is just perfect but do look out as well we're going to have some sporadic storms hitting the island I can see Monday itself is going to be quite stormy but particularly on the south of the island as well I've, I've seen, seen we're, we're expecting some stormy weather some thunderstorms on the south of the island if you are hiring a car and um, look out for the most recent weather forecast before you head out for the day I'm pretty sure just by driving around the island at whatever time you wish going wherever you want to go to as well you're going to find some sunshine so otherwise expect plenty of sunshine um, a little bit of cloud mixed in as well and the occasional sporadic shower but it's looking all good for the week ahead bring your summer clothes maybe pack a brolly too just in case okay everyone thank you very much for watching this video i hope you found it useful i'll be back on the island this week i'll be heading out into the resorts as well to bring you lots of updates from the resort as we head on through july so it's gonna be quite exciting too got loads more content for you as i said earlier consider subscribing if you haven't done so already don't forget you can also find me on the facebook group too and on my instagram also called mallorca under the sun and i look forward to seeing you on the next video goodbye for now